Mr. Emmanuel Marshall was an honest, hard-working blacksmith in Denham, a village situated near Uxbridge on the outskirts of modern London. In 1870, he was 36 years old and lived in a small cottage in Cheapside Lane with his wife, Charlotte, and his four children. His mother, who had become widowed a few years earlier, also lived in the cottage, and his sister Mary, who was just about to get married, moved in with them in May 1870. This meant that Francis, his youngest boy, had to go and live with his aunt for a while since there was simply not enough room for him. The last house on the right hand side on the horseshoe shaped lane from the main London to Oxford Road. It was relatively isolated with the nearest houses being 150 so yards away. The family went to the market in Oxbridge where many people saw them. Later that day, two young daughters were seen playing outside the house and Marshall was heard working inside. On Monday the 23rd of May, a woman who was making a wedding dress for Miss Mary Marshall, the sister who was getting married the very next day, came to the cottage. Since there was no response when she knocked on the door, she peeped through a window and she was horrified to find that a bloodbath had occurred. The floor of the cottage was drenched with gore and strewn with children's corpses. Screaming, she ran to fetch the village constable. Arriving from Slough with half a dozen men, Superintendent Thomas Dunham took charge of the murder investigation. The cottage contained six corpses, Marshall's wife, mother and sister, and the three children. They had all been beaten to death with a heavy, blunt instrument, presumably a sledgehammer. At first, it was thought that Marshall himself might have murdered his family, but a further search found his body, bringing the tally to seven victims. His head had been beaten in with a series of powerful blows, just like those with the other victims, so it was impossible that it could be inflicted these injuries himself. The superintendent instead presumed that Marshall had interrupted a burglar trying to steal his tools and that after this brutal individual had dealt with the blacksmith, he had entered the cottage, driven its inhabitants before him and murdered them one by one before stealing all the valuables in the house. There are obvious signs that the murder cottage had been searched and some of Marshall's clothes were missing. It turned out that the Denham village constable had seen an evil looking tramp lurking about in the neighbourhood early on Sunday morning. A woman had seen a respectably dressed man leaving the murder cottage. She had initially thought it was Marshall himself. The man had told her that the Marshall family had just gone for a holiday. The same individual had later been spotted having a drink at the Dog and Duck carrying a canvas bag. The canny superintendent suspected this was a murderous tramp who had done Marshall's Sunday best after wiping out the family and carried the stolen items in his canvas bag. The Denham atrocity had caused widespread revulsion in the newspapers. The hue and cry was up for the mysterious tramp sighted in Denham wearing Marshall's clothes. There was speculation that he must have held a grudge against the blacksmith for some reason or other. On Tuesday, a man named Coombs, a bricklayer who lived in a lodging house in Uxbridge, informed the police about a rough looking fellow lodger whom he only knew as Jack. This individual had been very poor before the weekend but flush with money on Monday. When shown some bloodstained clothes left behind in the murder cottage by the killer, Coombs identified them as the same clothes he had seen Jack wear. When he had met Jack on Monday morning, the lodger had told him that he was going to Reading on the 6.45 p.m. train. The police found this information very valuable indeed and Superintendent Dunham took Coombs with him to Reading's search for the absconded Jack. A Reading constable who knew the ways of the local tramps thought the suspect might have taken refuge in the Oxford Arms public house in Silver Street. When they entered a room known as the Tramp's Kitchen, Coombs called out, That's the man! Pointing at an ugly, dirty tramp with almost simian features, Although Superintendent Dunham knew that a loaded pistol had been stolen from Marshall's cottage, he went for the ruffian, seizing him by the throat with a hearty goodwill. To be sure, the tramp tried to draw the pistol, but was captured after a violent struggle. Not just the pistol, but several other items from Marshall's cottage were found on the person, 
as well as some pawn tickets for the items he had already pawned to get some spending money. When the suspect was taken to Slough Station, he would have been lynched by a furious mob had the Superintendent Dunham not been able to restore order. The tramp turned out to be the former blacksmith John Owen, alias Jones, a desperate ruffian hailing from Wolverhampton. He had previously done time for larceny and sheep rustling. Marshall had once employed him to mend some wheels, but since Owen had done the job so badly he was not paid, the police speculated that the insult had stuck in the mind of the long-minded workshire tramp and he decided to get even with Marshall by stealing his tools. As Owen had been about to be released from prison two days before the massacre, he had been heard speaking of the man in Denham who owed him money, adding that if he did not get it off him, he would murder him. Owen never admitted his crimes, nor did he provide any explanation why, after beating Marshall to death, he had run into the cottage and murdered the entire family. Hardly a criminal mastermind, he had left his own bloodstained clothes behind the murder cottage, clothes that people could identify, instead of swiftly absconding to some faraway place. When finally travelling to Reading, he had told a person he did not know and could not trust exactly where he was going. The criminal prosecution of Owen was a straightforward matter, due to the stupidity shown by the murderer. When the judge sentenced him to death, the tramp replied, Thank you, sir. His only regret was not shooting Superintendent Dunham as well. When his father and a strange wife came to see him in the condemned cell, he asked them what they had to stimble up. Owen denied the existence of God, the devil, heaven and hell. When a kind Roman Catholic priest came to prepare him for death, he was driven away with rude outbursts. Owen ate a hearty final supper and asked to be allowed to sleep inside the coffin that had been made for him. On the scaffold at Aylesbury Jail, he wanted to address the officials and newspaper reporters present, asserting his innocence, but he had forgotten the surname of the murdered man. Few were sorry when Calcraft, the hangman, launched the murderer into eternity.